Hey, deserved listeners, 90 Day Fiance, Love in Paradise, the Caribbean. Let's watch. Be else, if we didn't have a, a set plan on her moving to America, and it's hard for me to wrap my head around the person I love being with somebody else. If I give up on the idea of California, then can we be exclusive? Okay, so this is a good conversation, a healthy conversation. He is faced with a situation where she doesn't want to go to California. She wants to stay where she's at. And he has a job out there, I think, so he has to go back and wants to go back. And he is faced with going back and maybe they never see each other again. They, they break up. But I, he, he does, he's in love. He doesn't want to throw away the relationship. So he is asking, can we be exclusive? And it's good. You know, in other relationships on 90 Day Fiancé, we would see other kinds of communication. He's being honest. And he's, a, at least in this instance, a monogamous-oriented individual. I don't know if Kay is, though. So there's a possibility that Kay is not monogamous-oriented, and she's more polyamorous or non-monogamously-oriented. And or she's just not that into Mark. She really, really likes him and really likes spending time with him, but doesn't want to... Um, give up other you know, prospects. So, um, and she's been pretty honest about her feelings and has been straightforward and won't hold things back for the sake of his feelings because it's important that she's honest about this. So let's see what she says. I don't understand why you put your focus only in the exclusivity. It's like a obsession. I'm not telling you uh, Tomorrow I will go with other men. No, no. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, and she has this attitude uh, that, and she just said it, that he's obsessed with exclusivity. Uh, that's a weird way to put it. There's nothing wrong with someone being monogamous. There's nothing monogamously oriented. Uh, and that's what he is. And he's asking nicely. He's not being a jerk face about it. I think what she hopes is that he will be a part of his life off and on uh, you know, for the foreseeable future, but she does not want to be exclusive to him. So I don't understand why she has to put him down. She could say, okay, you've asked nicely. And the answer is no. Uh, I'm not saying I'm going to be with other men tomorrow, but I might be. And I'm, I don't want to be exclusive to you. I don't want to be exclusive to anybody. So that'd be totally fine for her to say, but she doesn't have to say that there's something wrong with him for asking that because, you know, there's a lot of people that like monogamy. I don't put my mind in that. Old school uh, think about uh, the exclusivity. 2021, think about that. Okay, so she's equating non monogamy with being more contemporary or modern or being a freer thinker. And certainly there is a correlation. As our society moves forward, we are seeing more people uh, coming forward and saying that they're not into exclusive monogamous relationships. And that's a good thing that they're able to assert that. But to equate monogamy with the past and with tradition and with, uh, you know, the patriarchy or, you know, something that was negative in the past is, in my opinion, in the research demonstrates not necessarily the right way to see it. Uh, my opinion is based on a lot of research and a lot of working with clients on this issue is some people are most, you know, there's a spectrum, if you will, and we fluctuate throughout our lives, which is another thing to think about, you know. You could be 35 and married and want to be monogamous, but when you were 20 and you were in college, maybe you weren't, you know, so, so, you know, there's, there's different, you didn't want to be in, ex in an exclusive relationship. Even if you fell in love, you'd be like, I don't know if I want to give up the possibility of being with other people right now. So it fluctuates over time, but there seemed to be a uh, stable, uh, comfortable place that people will gravitate towards in relationships in particular, whether uh, on the spectrum from total monogamy and total polyamory and total non-monogamy. And again, some people will fluctuate and some people have a range that they're comfortable in. Some, you know, some people are comfortable being totally polyamorous or um, kind of monogamous. You know, it, it just kind of depends on what sort of relationship they're in. So yes, as we move forward in society and we have more freedoms and less oppression, and more research, but not non-monogamy and polyamory, it are becoming more accepted, which is important. 
but to equate monogamy with a thing of the past and is outdated is wrongheaded. And I'm not thinking about be with other person. Pero no le puedo prometer a Mark exclusividad si vamos a estar viviendo en diferentes países. Creo que las relaciones más sanas son las que dejan ser a la otra persona. So again, it's not necessarily true. Certainly you can have a healthy relationship that uh, quote unquote allows your partner to be with other people. Polyamory, non-monogamy can be extremely healthy and very satisfactory to those involved for sure. But to claim that monogamy is inherently unhealthy is strange. So I wonder where she comes from. You know, maybe the pendulum has swung too far in her mind or in her, you know, maybe for her, this is true that as she moves towards non monogamy and as she experienced non monogamous individuals, they seem a lot more happy and happy and a lot more healthy. But that is definitely not the case. <laughs> there are a lot of dysfunction, the same in monogamous circles as there are in polyamorous circles. So um, there's that. Sometimes when we discover something new, we think it's the best thing ever. You know, like some people will discover psychedelics or microdosing and they'll uh, say, hmm, you know, it seems to be working for me. And then people start talking on the internet how it's going to save the world. I remember there was talk about marijuana in the early 90s, late 80s, when there was talk about legalization. There was all these claims of how it was going to save the world. It was going to solve pollution problems if we had more hemp in our lives. You know, there's just all these claims that were way beyond what is, you know, shown by the evidence. Um, some of the claims were fine. And uh, part of the issue, actually, while I'm on this topic sociologically, is that you are getting all these messages from society that monogamy is the only way, from religion, from TV shows, from people, from the law, from the government. You know, the government doesn't allow for polyamorous relationships, uh, as far as I know. And you're just getting, you know, from day one, you're just getting all these messages and non-monogamy is for slut people and for gross people and immoral people, and they're gonna go to, you know, hell and all these things. and. Then you emerge into adulthood and you start, you discover for yourself or other people start introducing you to non-monogamy and you're like, huh, actually this feels pretty good. And there's, it's not for slut people or immoral people or bad people. It's, it's fine. In fact, I'm finally free. I'm finally able to be myself. It's tempting as you emerge into that world to look back and think the whole thing is a sham. All of what I was taught was wrong. And anyone who you know, purports monogamy personally is, is deluding themselves. I think that's a possible thing that's happening right now. So I think if Mark won't be with me, lo mejor que podemos hacer es estar separados hasta que llegue el momento de estar juntos. And Mark, you need to try don't think in the monogamy. And what non-monogamous people are often faced with is trying to convince others to be non-monogamous. I think for Kay, she wants to retain Mark as a occasional partner and she doesn't want to lose him. So she's trying to convince him to be non-monogamous by saying his way of thinking is stupid. And uh, I've seen people do this to people where the, the polyamorous, the non-monogamous person is like, you got to free your mind, man. You got to. And, you know, sometimes that's actually relevant because there are closeted polyamorous non-monogamous people who don't know they're non-monogamously oriented because they've never been allowed to or they've never allowed themselves to think about it that way. So there is some validity to that. But there's also uh, some element of coercion involved of. I'm going to make you a, a monogamous oriented person into a non-monogamous person through social pressure. To be somebody that she's not. I need to think beyond my own fears, beyond my own insecurities, because she's the love of my life. So I need to learn how to reconcile being in an open relationship and accept that we're going to be long distance for a while. Interesting. So she effectively convinced Mark, and I think Mark wants to make it work because he loves her, to be in an open relationship, to be in a non-monogamous relationship. 
I wonder how he's going to do. He's, he has the foundation. He's like, I'm, I'm going to have to get over my insecurities. And jealousy, you know, thinking about your partner being with someone else, is you could frame it as being uh, insecure. You could also frame it as, hey, I'm, an, I'm a monogamous person. <laughs> and that's just how I want to be. And I want to be with someone else who is also monogamously oriented. So... I don't know if they're going to give us enough episodes to find out. Maybe there'll be a season two as to how Mark will deal with the knowledge or the wonder of Kay being with other people. Maybe Mark can be non-monogamous, can be in a polyamorous relationship. And this is the beginning of him discovering that. Or is he trying to shove a round peg into a square hole? Yeah, you're right. What's most important for me is for us to be together. I still want to be with you. I want to love you how you want to be. As I've been saying over the past few episodes, Mark and Kay are exhibiting very, very healthy information or communication. Uh, the Kays of the show, 90 Day Fiance, will often not have conversations like this. They'll just cheat. But we've also seen with Tariq and Hazel who were exhibiting polyamory and weren't calling it that. They were calling it bisexuality, which is a part of it, but the larger umbrella was polyamory that they were discussing and, and having. Their relationship was a little interesting and, and not very healthy. There were There seemed to be some things between Tariq and that other woman. And anyway, Whereas with these two, you know, they're exhibiting very healthy communication. So, so that's good. Like, like I said, a lot of the K's of the show would just cheat. Uh, we've seen that a lot. And we have to wonder about those people who are cheating, especially in long distance relationships, if they're actually non-monogamously oriented. You know, there's a pretty good percentage of people who are um, non-monogamously oriented but are trying to shove themselves as a square peg into a round hole. Um, so Kay's being extremely healthy by just saying, look, I, I like to be in an open relationship. I want to be with other people. I'm not saying I will, but I, I, if the you know situation arises, I want to. And I'm going to be upfront with you about it. And that, that's what ethical non-monogamy is. People sometimes think, isn't you know being in an open relationship just cheating? No. Ethical non-monogamy is discussing up front, saying this is the, if you want to be in a relationship with me, um, this is what is going to happen. I, I, I'm not looking for other relationships, but if one comes along, I'm going to be with that person. And that's, you know, that's what, that's, and I, and I allow you to do the same thing. So, uh, and then maybe there's more talk about like, well, what does that mean? Does that mean you're going to fall in love? Does that mean we are primary? Does it mean someone else could become primary? Does that, what if that other person is monogamous and you're really into them? Are you going to kick me out? Uh, what, do you, what, what all are you going to do with them? Does, does it mean that if I ask you out on a date and the other guy asks you out on a date, I'm going to, you know, win the argument, so to speak? You know, a lot of discussion. And all the polyamorous couples and polycules that I've talked to in my office are very, very good about talking about these things well in advance because it's in the principles of ethical non-monogamy to communicate. Sometimes. No, always. The first thing when I go back tomorrow is I, I find a, a, a Spanish teacher. There's still a lot of unknowns where we're going to live. All right. Well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.